My name is Viktor Zverovich, and I'm a software engineer at Facebook. I'll be talking today about a modern formatting library for C++, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with my work at Facebook. Uh, in fact, I started this project uh, long before I joined uh, uh, Facebook, and uh, I worked on it uh, in my spare time mostly. Uh, first, a bit of wisdom from uh, one of the reviewers of my CppCon submission. So uh, formatting is something everybody uses, but nobody has put much efforts to, effort to learn. Uh, and I hope very much that you'll learn something from this talk. Uh, so uh, here is a brief high-level overview of what formatting facilities we have uh, in C++. Obviously, we have two standard solutions, uh, STDIO and uh, IOSTREAMS. And we have a bunch of formatting libraries uh, like uh, Booster Format and Fast Format, uh, arguably two most uh, well-known libraries. And uh, I also included Foley Format. It's not a separate library, but a part of Facebook Foley, uh, which provides for formatting facilities. Uh, I include it here because it's very relevant to what I'll be talking about. And there are millions of other ways of doing formatting. Pretty much every large code base has their own, has their own safe uh, printf replacement for various definitions of safe. Uh, and uh, I'll go in roughly chronological order, uh, starting from the past, stdio, which we inherited from the C, C standard library. And uh, um, here's a, like, a warm up trivial example, uh, and also uh, to calibrate the audience and see how many of you are sleeping or checking emails, and how many of you are awake. So uh, who thinks that uh, this is, there is an error in the slide? I don't think there's an error in the slide, there's an error in the code. In the code, <laughs> yeah, this is correct. <laughs> um, who think that this is okay? This, is, this code is fine. Okay. <laughs> now, one per person thinks that it's fine. Yeah. So, um, obviously, there is a uh, mismatch between the argument type and the format specifier, which is percent %s, which assumes that the uh, argument uh, should be a C string or an terminated string. And uh, good compilers like GCC or Clang uh, will warn you eagerly and uh, give lots of useful details. They even say which format specifier you can use instead. And uh, uh, this is great, but uh, unfortunately it only works for literal format strings. And in reality, they can be dynamic. They can uh, come from, uh, especially due to localization. Um, so uh, another problem is memory safety. Uh, let's assume that you want to format an integer and you uh, went to great lengths to compute exactly how many characters you think uh, you need to allocate for a buffer. So uh, you even uh, added one for terminated thing null character and uh, this is the common source of errors, of course, and you allocated the <laughs> vector of the of this size, and uh, you passed this uh, uh, buffer to a sprintf together with the format string uh, and an argument, where x is the same as before; it's an integer, and you uh, store the uh, return value in the result variable. So. Uh, <laughs> Who thinks that this code is correct? Okay, good. Who thinks that it's incorrect? Okay, yeah, this is incorrect. And if, you, if we wanna check and print the uh, result plus one for null terminator and the size, most of the time it will kind of work, but uh, for over a billion of integers, if you use 32-bit, um, uh, platform, you'll get uh, output 12, 11, which means that you have a buffer overflow. And uh, Obviously, it will happen for integers less or equal to uh, 
uh, minus one billion because we didn't take into account uh, the minus sign. And solution is to use SN printf, but unfortunately it cannot grow buffer dynamically, so um, you either need to pre-compute size or overestimate the size, which is suboptimal. And did you notice uh, another error on the previous slide? Not the uh, writing past the end of the buffer, but something else. So to uh, kind of remind you, here, we computed size, we returned the results, so did you see any errors, any more errors in this simple line of code? Yes, exactly. So, the size t and compiler again gives you this nice warning message, except that in this case it's incorrect. So, the correct specifier for size t is not percent %lu, but uh, percent %zu. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, uh, you can get errors like this, which is uh, an actual uh, screenshot from a bug report to a uh, game called uh, Cataclysm. If I read the uh, ASCII uh, art phones correctly, where you can see lots of Z use, which I don't think are intentional there. And this is pretty recent. This is uh, opened in 2016, this bug report. And uh, the problem was that they used Visual Studio, which didn't support %zu until like version 2015, I believe. And we have the whole zoo of uh, macros for fixed sized integer types uh, that uh, define different format specifiers. Uh, this table I took from cppreference.com. Uh, and uh, the worst thing about these macros is that to use them, you have to break the string, insert the macro, and uh, then continue your string, which is horrible. I don't even know how would you use that with the non-literal string. So why do we need to pass type information manually if the compiler knows the types. So the answer is, of course, bar args, which are so old they have been featured on the History Channel. <laughs> so um, for a long time, I believed that var args must be super fast at C, right? It's the best. Uh, but then I looked at the actual uh, generated assembly code and kind of did some benchmark. Uh, so what I found out that uh, on some platforms, at least, maybe on all platforms, they are non-inlinable. Uh, well, functions that use vargs are non-inlinable, and also they produce a bunch of code to store the uh, registers on stack. Uh, this seems insignificant, so we can measure what's the uh, impact. Uh, so um, it's just a few percent, not very important, but annoying. And also, if you optimize the underlying printf implementation, which can be done in the, uh, I have an alternative implementation, which is uh, somewhat faster, then it w this difference will be more profound. <coughs> so, uh, a more serious problem is a lack of random access. Uh, so, um, if you use positional arguments, you'll need to set up uh, extra arrays. And uh, printf does a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, on uh, my platform, which is uh, macOS with Clang, uh, if you use positional arguments with sprintf, it can be almost two times slower, which is crazy. Uh, what can we learn from it? So. Uh, we can learn that Varax is a poor choice for modern formatting API because of manual type management. Uh, they don't play well with positional arguments due to lack of random access. And the, we have uh, suboptimal code generation and the, co the functions are non-inlinable. So we can do much better with variadic templates. Uh, so now the question, why even bother about Varag's ancient stuff? Uh, 
The reason is uh, that uh, I saw many times uh, people write uh, safe printf replacement on top of sprintf. So they solve some of the issues, but uh, not all of them, and often add extra level, uh, layer of overhead by performing these type checks. So I think uh, it's better to go and uh, kind of start from scratch and uh, uh, use uh, variadic templates kind of uh, in the first place. And uh, finally, in this uh, uh, historical section, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about extensibility. Uh, there is no standard way to extend printf. Uh, by extending, I mean supporting formatting of your own uh, types. But there is a GNU extension, and uh, as you might imagine, it's pretty horrible. Uh, so uh, to use it, you need to register two functions, one that actually does formatting. Here, uh, it's called print widget, and it's, it does uh, an unsafe uh, cast there, and it's supposed to format uh, the object that you passed in. And the other is kind of uh, type checking function, although the only thing that it does, it just says that the argument should be some kind of a pointer which is not very type safe. Uh, so, uh, and moreover, in, if I remember correctly, they recommend uh, only using uppercase letters when registering uh, uh, handlers for new types. So if you ever want to support formatting more than 26 uh, types in your program, you're out of luck. Um, this brings us to the present, or IO streams, which is uh, the standard C++ way of doing formatting and I.O. And uh, while it solves lots of problems with uh, printf that we saw uh, earlier, it has uh, problems of, of its own. Uh, one of the most obvious thing is uh, what uh, Matthew Wilson, the author of, of Fast Format, called uh, Chevron Hell, which I think is a very good uh, description. <laughs> so uh, here we have two snippets of code that do pretty much the same formatting. So uh, one uses printf and other uses uh, iostream. So uh, who prefers the printf version? Okay. Who prefers the uh, iostream's version? Oh. <laughs> have one, have a few hands there. Uh, but the majority seem to prefer printf. So if we put aside all the issues with it, the, uh, obviously the uh, code is much more compact and readable. Uh, and finally, C++11 gave in to format specifiers for time and introduced the uh, std put time function. Um, there are some Differences in these two pieces of code, which I will talk about later. Um, so another issue that we have with the uh, iStreams is uh, problems with translations. So if we use printf, we have the whole uh, message with arguments available for translation. But in iStreams, by design, uh, parts of uh, message are interleaved with formatting arguments. And uh, the thing is, uh, in general, translation of the formatted message is not equal to the concatenation of translated parts, at least in uh, many languages. Uh, it doesn't mean that the formatting library should provide translation facilities, but it should be possible to build them on top of the uh, uh, provided API. Other problems related to this is reordering of arguments and access to arguments for pluralization. Um, so uh, now let's take a look at I.O. manipulators. So uh, in the first line, we just uh, print out some integer in hexadecimal, and then we try to print something else. So uh, what do you think uh, the second line 
will print out? Who thinks it will print out 42? No? Oh, good. <laughs> what do you think it will print out? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so the, it will print out 2A, obviously, because we didn't switch back to decimal. And uh, uh, some flags are sticky, some are not, so uh, go figure. Um, and the solution uh, to this problem is to use uh, uh, boost IO iOS flag saver, uh, but it's a bit annoying. So uh, I think that ideally formatting uh, functions when you call them, they shouldn't produce any side effects other than the output itself. And uh, here in this example, uh, we are trying to write a little bit of JSON and we can do it manually like in this trivial example where we can use one of the uh, tons of uh, JSON serialization libraries and uh, uh, which underneath can do an equivalent of this code. Uh, so uh, what do you think uh, this will print out to? So, uh, will it be like uh, curly braces, value, and within them value uh, colon 4.2? Who thinks it will be kind of expected at all? <laughs> no, they're, they're all tricky questions, right? Uh, so the answer is uh, it depends <laughs> because we are using locales. And uh, most of the time, oh, well, as they say, it works on my machine. Uh, it works fine. It will print a value colon 42, which is a perfect uh, JSON as far as I understand. Until someone sets the global locale to something like Russian UTF-8 or other weird thing, then you get a, instead of your nice decimal point, you get a decimal comma or, I don't know, decimal ampersand or whatever the locale decides to choose for decimal separator. Uh, so uh, you can argue it won't happen to me. I'm a responsible developer. I'm setting my locale to see, but uh, in fact, it can happen to you, if, especially if you're developing a library and you, have, you don't want to mess up with the global state. And uh, it happened to me personally. This is a bug report with a very helpful uh, title, an accepted exception. Uh, so um, this happened because uh, the user had an Italian Locale and I was not careful enough to uh, make sure the output is locale independent and the uh, format I was writing to didn't really uh, allow decimal uh, commas. Um, I would argue that uh, the only reason for the output to be locale dependent if it's displayed to the actual user, if you're writing to JSON or XML or anything else, uh, there are strict rules that you must adhere and uh, the output should be locale independent. And maybe this should be the default behavior on the, or at the very least you should have control over it. Uh, um, and uh, I should stress that this issue is not specific to iOS streams. Uh, in fact, uh, this bug report uh, in, was open to a project where I didn't use iOS streams, but it's a, kind of a common problem. And yet another can of worms called threads. Let's say you want to print some something from multiple threads. In this case, we are printing, printing some simple uh, greeting messages from two threads, and uh, then, then we join them. So uh, again, who thinks that it will print something obvious like, uh, hello, Joe, hello, Jim? Who thinks it's an uh, undefined behavior? Well, I think uh, that's a good answer, reasonable answer by default. If you see a reasonably big 
chunk of C++ code, the default kind of assumption should be, <laughs> this is an undefined behavior. This is like a rule of thumb. Uh, but uh, I don't think there is an undefined behavior unless I made some stupid mistake, which is entirely possible. Uh, but the answer again, it depends. And one of the better outputs that I have chosen out of, by running it multiple times and then selecting the one that I liked, was hello, hello, Joe Jim. And uh, the reason why I like this particular uh, output is that when I was a kid, I liked to read uh, Robert Heinlein's uh, Orphans in the Sky, uh, which had a uh, two-headed character called Joe Jim Gregory. <laughs> uh, so note that uh, in case of uh, C out, there is synchronization there, but not on the level of messages, uh, but rather uh, uh, individual arguments that you output, uh, which is a bit of a regression compared to uh, POSIX printf, where you could have a perfect output. So uh, now a bit of uh, Alternative history. Uh, what would happen if formatting libraries became mainstream and took over the world? Uh, well, not really. This is just an overview of some of the major formatting libraries um, and uh, some of the limitations of them, which may explain why they've never uh, taken off. Uh, so uh, boost format is probably the most well-known and uh, uh, widely used uh, formatting library. It, suppo it supports two uh, syntaxes or for its format strings. A printf syntax, which you can see in the example below, and uh, a simplified syntax where with position positional arguments where you can omit type specifiers And the syntax is uh, very expressive, but somewhat complicated uh, because you can do everything in multiple different ways. So here you have four uh, examples that do the same. Uh, and although it supports printf syntax, it's not fully compatible. So it's not a drop-in replacement, which kind of undermines uh, the reason to go this way in the first place. Uh, but the main problem with boost format is uh, illustrated on this slide. Uh, the, the performance, code bloat, and compile times uh, are all very disappointing compared to printf. Uh, and not only printf, I'll show later more benchmarks uh, comparing to other formatting libraries. Uh, now this is the actual photo of me in 2012 when I <laughs> ran the benchmark and, uh, and realized I can't use this uh, library and I have to come up with something else. Uh, another well-known library is fast format. Unlike boost, unlike boost format, it is reportedly fast. It even has its, in its name, which must be true then. Uh, but I've never verified it for the reasons listed here. But, uh, this is a quote from the author of the library. So the uh, kind of features that cannot be accommodated within the design are leading zeros or other padding, octal hexadecimal encoding, runtime width alignment, which seems very restrictive and makes one scratch one's head. So uh, uh, how is it possible? Fortunately, the author came up with a solution with the same article. So uh, the way you work around this limitation is by wrapping arguments together with uh, kind of format specifiers represented in code, so to speak, uh, and pass this wrapper object instead of the actual argument. But now, I fail to see how is it better than IO streams. It's even more verbose now. Uh, it has some advantages. For example, uh, uh, it's non-sticky uh, flags, but uh, 
Uh, and also uh, we have atomicity, but uh, otherwise uh, it doesn't look very appealing. So having looked at all the current solutions and limitations, let's uh, uh, take a look at the proposed future or the uh, P0645R revision number standards proposal text formatting, which is based on the FMT library I've been working on the last few years. And uh, the motivation for this proposal is to have an alternative to uh, the printf family function, particularly sprintf, which is safe, extensible, and fast. Also, it should be interoperable with IOS streams. We don't want to get rid of IOS streams at all. Um, We'd like to have small code size and reasonable compile times, uh, have some local control, and have some expressive syntax for our format strings. So, as I said, this is not an IOS stream replacement, so if you invested in a tattoo featuring IOS streams, you won't need to get rid of it or camouflage it with flowers or butterflies. So, oh, it's good. So uh, let me show you a few examples that introduce the syntax. Um, so the format string uh, use uh, brace delimited uh, replacement field. Um, like in this example, I think uh, it's pretty self-describing. Also, um, you can use positional arguments within the braces. You can refer to arguments with their indices starting from zero. And uh, you can use format specifiers similar to printf's after the colon, like in the example at the bottom. Of course, you can have uh, width either specified in the format string or dynamically, you can refer to an argument that gives the uh, output width. And similarly, you can have precision specified in the format string or dynamically. The way you do it if, is after the uh, point, you uh, specify the width, either literally or referring to an argument. Also, you can use three types of alignments. In fact, there are four times alignments, but the fourth uh, numeric alignment is complicated, so I'll, uh, I won't talk about it in this talk in the interest of time. So we have left, right, and center alignment, which is an improvement compared to printf, which doesn't have center alignment. I've never used center alignment myself, but I've heard it can be useful sometimes. Uh, and you can have uh, field end alignment, which is even more cool. You can do some kind of uh, uh, ASCII art or whatever. Uh, you might find the syntax familiar because it's largely based on Python, uh, particularly Python STR format, uh, because uh, they also have uh, percent formatting, similar to printf. Uh, it is more expressive than printf. Uh, in particular, you have field and center alignment, uh, but format specifiers are similar to printfs, and uh, almost everything that you can write after percent in printf, you can write after colon in this format syntax, which simplifies migration and uh, makes uh, it's easier to learn. Uh, but at the same time, the type is optional because uh, we use variadic templates, we know the types, so you don't need to repeat yourself. Uh, what do you mean by conflict? Uh, if you say S on a flow, it will throw an exception. The syntax is so simple that it fits on a single slide. 
even part of the slide. Um, so uh, I won't go into too much details. There's fill element. Uh, I think you got the idea from the examples. Uh, it's very easy to parse. Unlike boost format, the, so it's very consistent and simple. Uh, it also supports named arguments in addition to positional arguments. This is not included in the standards proposal to make it uh, reasonably compact, but uh, uh, it can be added later. So the way you uh, use named arguments is uh, inside the curly braces, you uh, give the name, and then uh, in the arguments, you wrap your arguments together with the name in the arg function. And also, someone implemented the uh, user-defined literal version of it, uh, which I won't uh, show. But you can find the uh, examples on the, in the documentation. And in the paper, uh, not, not, not in the paper, sorry. Um, so why do we need uh, the new syntax? Why not just use printf? So the reason is that we'd like to avoid all the legacy stuff, all this horrible macros and things like LL and the PRIU64, which is not even correct here because this is a sign integer. Uh, so instead, we just want to write uh, curly braces and uh, let the compiler figure out. Uh, unless we want to customize our formatting, then we use colon and say how we want our nice arguments to be formatted. Uh, so we want the uh, specifiers to be uh, semantical, to convey formatting information, not type information. For example, D means decimal formatting, not decimal int. If you see the... Uh, Subtle difference. And also something that I uh, call bring your own grammar. So um, you as a user can extend format string grammar for your own types. And uh, I show how to do this in this slide. Um, so the replacements uh, field consists of uh, um, curly brackets, uh, the argument ID, which can be uh, an index or a name, followed by colon and format spec. And format spec is well defined for um, um, uh, standard types, uh, well, built in types, uh, but for user defined types, you can interpret it uh, however you like and write your own parser. Um, the way you do it, well, the way you used to do it, because the extension API. Uh, is changing, uh, was to provide a format value function which took a buffer where you uh, wrote you, your output, the argument, in this case, I uh, just passed a time uh, TM object, um, and a context. The context provides uh, access to the portion of the format string being parsed and other arguments. Why you need other arguments for things like dynamic uh, width or dynamic precision? Um, so, but if it sounds too complicated, then uh, you don't have to do this. You can just uh, implement overloaded operator uh, uh, less, less, or insertion operator, uh, taking uh, off stream and your object of your type. Like, standard uh, IOS stream way of uh, um, implementing formatting of your types, and uh, it will fall back to this operator. So why this particular syntax? It has been proven to work. So Python designed the, this many language, went to great lengths to implement it and uh, test it in production. And it worked out very well. They wanted to deprecate old percent uh, printf-like formatting. But they didn't, but uh, for compatibility reasons. But they are in a more difficult state because uh, uh, percent formatting in Python is less broken than printf in uh, C and C++. It's just a little bit broken. 
So there are fewer reasons to migrate to the new, uh, there were fewer reasons to migrate to this new syntax, and still it was very popular. It was so popular that other languages like Rust adopted it. Uh, and uh, there are several uh, popular C++ implementation, the FMT library I'm talking about, and uh, Foley uh, format. And uh, the API is fully type safe, no varargs nonsense, uh, just variadic templates. So we have uh, the format function, which is the main uh, um, API function, which takes a uh, format string and arbitrary arguments and returns an STD string. If you want to be efficient, you, want, you don't want to allocate STD string maybe, uh, you want to write to a buffer allocated on stack or something, uh, then you can use the format to function which takes a buffer and the, again a format string and uh, arguments. So the memory management is automatic which, which prevents the whole range of errors. So the buffer concept represents a contiguous memory buffer uh, memory range with efficient access with only one uh, call, a virtual function call uh, if you need to grow. Um, it can have limited capacity and report an error in growth or, uh, uh, or it can grow dynamically. Uh, and it has also an associated locale. So here is a simplified uh, version of the uh, buffer class. So uh, we have size, capacity, resize, uh, access to data. This is very simplified, just to give an idea. And the uh, only two virtual functions, one when uh, you hit the capacity, you call grow, and either reallocate or report an error, and also a virtual function to get the locale. So, now let's go a little bit deeper and take a look at the format function, how it is implemented. And if you look at it, it's, it just forwards to V format, which is very similar to uh, printf, vprintf in some sense. So, um, so format calls V format with the same format string and it wraps arguments uh, in an object uh, called argstore which represents a, an array of references or copies, if the argument is civil, of reference to arguments. And to build this arg store, we call uh, make args function. And uh, the vformat function takes uh, not arg store, but the kind of view of this object, which is similar to, let's say, array view. Um, and notice that the format is not parameterized on the types, which might be surprising. And why is it so? So uh, this uh, slide shows the kind of implementation details, but I think it's still uh, interesting. So if we have small number of arguments, we can take all the types together and pack them in a single integer and uh, store a pointer and have a pointer to uh, uh, an array of uh, uh, pointers or copies of arguments. So, so argument store can be thought of as, a, uh, as an array of variants. Um, and uh, on the left is kind of compact representation of it and on the right is uh, expanded representation if the number of, of arguments is big and uh, they don't fit, uh, all the types don't fit in one integer. So why do this? Uh, it helps greatly with compile times and uh, code bloat. It makes the uh, per function uh, binary code very small comparable to printf. So uh, when you call printf, uh, you often have uh, an integer passed uh, representing the number of arguments passed anyway. So 
here we have the integer representing all your argument types. So uh, you have similar uh, binary code. Printf is a little bit be better because uh, vararcs pass more stuff in uh, registers. Uh, so um, another thing is uh, that uh, this kind of type erasure method uh, prevents code blows. So instead of uh, instantiated, instantiating all your formatting code on uh, all combinations of uh, arguments, you have just one instantiation. So why do you need all this stuff? Um, Let's benchmark and see whether it really helps or it's just uh, hand waving. So I wrote this little benchmark, which uh, might be uh, a little bit cryptic, but uh, let me guide you through it. So um, what it does, it calls the format function for 125 combinations, different combinations of argument types. So uh, this gen args functions, function uh, at the top, just calls f with uh, five arbitrary uh, objects. The only thing, they just need to be of different types, and then we combine them uh, between all possible combinations. So five to the power of three, we have one, 25 uh, combinations. And uh, now what do we compare it against? We can measure our implementation, the FMT library, but uh, I don't want to go and re-implement everything, passing the, uh, uh, parameterizing everything on templates. Moreover, I can do it inefficiently, intentionally to show how good my method is. Uh, fortunately, uh, Foley format comes to the rescue. They, uh, uh, they did exactly that. They passed all the arguments throughout the uh, uh, formatting code, and that's what we're gonna compare against. So this is uh, optimized Clang build uh, with and debug. Everything is linked dynamically. Uh, and as you can see, there is a tremendous improvement both in uh, compile time and uh, binary size. So the compile time is uh, roughly uh, uh, six or something uh, times better compared to Foley. Uh, when we apply this type erasure technique. Uh, and the uh, binary code size is by the order of magnitude better. And this is just formatting code. So uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I don't want uh, 100 calls to formatting function to take one megabyte of space. So what we can learn about that, uh, I think the lesson is use variadic templates judiciously. Don't pass them unnecessarily throughout all of your code. So a few more benchmarks. So this one is interesting. This uh, tries to be realistic, unlike the previous one, which, I, which tried to fit on the slide. So there are 100 translation units um, uh, with five calls to formatting functions per translation unit and no other code. Uh, this is optimized build. Uh, and as you can see, uh, boost format goes uh, through the roof. Uh, the FMT library, which is the basis of the pro uh, standards proposal, uh, is a little bit worse than printf. It used to be better before I switched to string view because now we have to pass an extra size argument compared to previous when we just passed an null terminated string. There is a trade-off. Now the API is more convenient because you don't have to pass an null terminated string, but you pay a little bit uh, for it. Um, but I think the price to pay is very little. And uh, if uh, it only matters if you operate in a very resource constrained environment. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can, obviously provide overloads uh, taking null terminated strings. So, ah, one thing to mention is uh, Foley format doesn't perform that bad here because uh, 
there are fewer combinations of types. So all these, there are only five different combinations of types in this benchmark, unlike 125, but it's still uh, quite a big difference. Here is a benchmark uh, showing compile time performance. Uh, unfortunately, with compile time, we, uh, there's that much we can do. Uh, so uh, printf beats everyone, obviously. Uh, I think we can get to the level of IR streams. In fact, uh, it used to be in the level of IR streams until some recent regression, and uh, I think we can uh, bring it back down. But it still performs uh, significantly better than other formatting libraries. And uh, a lot of efforts have been put into optimizing compile times, particularly by uh, Dean Moldovan, who has done great research and uh, investigated uh, different ways of optimizing uh, compile times and even uh, Put, out, uh, put together these graphs of compile times uh, like, uh, over the number of arguments. This is on Clang. And uh, the way uh, it was optimized is by replacing uh, template recursion with the veridic array initialization. Interestingly, it didn't give uh, such a big improvement on GCC, only on Clang. Also, uh, it's more noticeable if you use very large number of arguments, like 10 or 12. Uh, now, more kind of traditional benchmark runtime performance. Uh, as you can see, FMT performs uh, maybe within 10 something percent compared to printf and uh, better than IR streams and other formatting libraries. IR streams perform, for some reason, particularly bad on uh, this platform, which is Mac OS with Clang. On Linux with GCC, the difference was not that profound. And uh, uh, one thing to uh, mention is that there is nothing in the design of the library that uh, makes it impossible to bit printf. Uh, in fact, this particular benchmark is uh, largely dominated by uh, uh, formatting of floating point numbers. And for floating point, uh, FMT currently falls back to sprintf. So it cannot be better than printf. But for integer formatting, I showed in some other benchmarks that uh, it was possible to bit printf, even with allocation of string. So, and you can of course write your own formatting functions similar to format. Let's say you want to write a function that uh, takes an error code and a format uh, string and some arguments and writes the, these to a log. Uh, so you can apply, either make it variadic if you don't care about compile times or anything, or you can apply the same technique to your own code and uh, get the same benefits. So work in progress is separation of uh, parsing and formatting in the extension API. So instead of format value function that I showed before that does everything, parsing and formatting, we want to uh, be able to specialize this formatter object, have a separate function that does parsing, separate function that does formatting, and uh, you, between these two, you can store the state in the object itself. And you can reuse standard formatters. You can, uh, for example, inherit your formatter from formatter int and use the say, and uh, get the same parse method and only, uh, let's say, uh, provide the, the format method. For example, if your uh, object is just a, some kind of wrapper around, around int. Uh, other things I'm looking into is compile time format string checks and uh, range-based interface. So let's take a look at the uh, new extension API. Here's a little example. Uh, let's say you want to format a vector of some uh, objects of arbitrary type. So you uh, 
So you specialized uh, the formatter struct and inherit it from the formatter T. And you don't need to uh, provide the parse method. Let's say you just uh, want to uh, reuse the uh, parsing for the, uh, uh, of the format string for the, uh, uh, for the vector um, uh, from the uh, formatter of T. So you only provide the uh, format method. And um, the way uh, you implement it, you just write to a buffer a uh, brace uh, delimited comma separated uh, list of values. And you just uh, uh, delegate all the work to the formatter of T. And it's very simple, it fits on the slide and it can be used as shown uh, below. Of course, if you want uh, more uh, advanced features, you can uh, have a different syntax. You can implement your parse method and uh, I don't know, a customized separator instead of hard coding comma here, but that's all up to you. So the migration, will we ever be able to migrate from printf? I think uh, that it might be possible here, some of the ideas. So there is an easy mapping between the printf and this mini language. Uh, and we can come up with a compatibility library which with printf-like semantics, uh, particularly that returns error codes and uh, in other ways it's similar to printf and maybe even, uh, um, uh, well, we won't make a drop-in replacement probably, but we can have a tool like clunk tidy which goes over your code base and transform literal strings into this uh, new format. So, so with this proposal, uh, I went to the Toronto Standards Committee meeting and uh, presented, and my main uh, goal was to uh, uh, get an kind of initial feedback and uh, understand whether people want this in the standard, should I work on this or go on with my life. Uh, but unfortunately for my life, it was fairly well received and uh, I've been encouraged to continue and I'm working on a revision uh, of the proposal. So a little bit about the library itself. So um, you can find it on GitHub, um, fmtlib slash um, fmt. There is also a website, fmt.net with the documentation. Uh, there have been many contributors, which I'm very grateful to. And uh, um, some people took uh, time and uh, packaged the library for all major Linux distributions for uh, uh, Homebrew and NuGet. And uh, you can find the uh, implementation of the uh, standards proposal in a separate branch called STD. Uh, a bit of, of uh, history, more history. So it started in uh, 2012, uh, and the originally the library was called CPP format. Um, it was inspired by formatting facilities in Clang. That's kind of surprising. I don't even remember what the facilities were. I just remember this fact. And back then, the library looked completely different. It didn't use variadic templates. It used a uh, weird uh, operator overloading API. Uh, until I figured out how to uh, uh, emulate variadic templates with variadic macros for compatibility with C++ 98. Uh, so um, since uh, around mid 2016, main focus was on the standards proposal. Uh, and that's why you don't see very many commits or activity in the timeline because this shows the master branch and uh, all the work is done in the STD branch. Um, and there's been a lot of projects using FMT. Here's a small selection. One in particular that I want to uh, draw your attention at is SPD log, which is a great uh, logging library. So many uh, people uh, 
don't feel, don't even realize that they, they use FMT. They get it through SPD log, which is fine by me because I get fewer uh, bug reports. Uh, no, all the bug reports end up in FMT. <laughs> the author of SPD log is very thorough. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you for the uh, attention, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, I have a question yes. about uh, formatting um, the uh, floating point numbers. Uh, isn't there like uh, another way to do that without uh, going to SPRINF, like a standalone library? I'm not an expert, I think I saw something that's not going through CLIP. Yes, so C the question is uh, whether there is uh, a, another way to do formatting of floating point numbers without going through sprintf. So uh, yes, uh, for example, we can implement a Grisu algorithm or use a double conversion library which does this uh, and not rely on a sprintf. That's actually one of the uh, uh, items on my to-do list. Maybe I'll do it sometime. Uh, another question, I was, I was just looking through the GitHub implementation for, uh, you know, common compile time bottlenecks, and you're not doing a lot of template metaprogramming. Do you have, a, do you know what, what's taking a long time in compile time? Um, so the question is, do I know what's taking a long time uh, in, in, a long compile time? Uh, I haven't looked at it recently. Uh, so uh, last time we looked at it, there was a problem when we used the recursive uh, kind of template stuff. Right now, I'm not sure what exactly uh, contributing to compile times. I would appreciate if anyone knows how, a good way to debug uh, kind of uh, perf compile times. I think yeah, there is a Clang extension, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it would be interesting. Um, there exists some Clang extensions to help to allow you to do static checking of things, so you can flag incorrect format strings at compile time. Have you explored any of those? Um, so, uh, if I understood your question correctly, there is a Clang extension to uh, check format strings at compile time. It allows you to write a function that would check. Uh, so unfortunately, as far as I know, it only works uh, for printf syntax. Uh, there, there's a Clang extension to let you specify your own custom function. Ah, there's a Clang extension that specifies uh, using your own uh, Function. No, I didn't know about that. It would be interesting to look into it. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. I was wondering. Can you hear me? Yes. I was wondering if there's any kind of improvement that you could make when the format string is a const expression so that more of the kind of parsing of the format string happens at compile time as opposed to runtime. And uh, take into a logical conclusion if you say, uh, hello string and the string is world, that could just compile down to hello world and do nothing at runtime. Uh, yes, in, in theory. In theory. Uh, so the question is, uh, are there any optimization we can do uh, for uh, compile const expert strings and uh, arguments? Uh, for example, if we have uh, both the format string, if we have everything const expert to uh, uh, do formatting at compile time, basically. Uh, so uh, right now I'm only looking at uh, compile time checking of format strings, but uh, in theory I think it should be possible uh, to do parsing and uh, at least construction of the format object at compile time and maybe even uh, uh, formatting itself, but uh, there's still a lot of work to do. Thanks. Um, yeah, I guess the, the problem just sort of seems interesting as a few of the questions have been related to it. Um, sort of, you kind of have a plan of attack for 
a situation where string literal pass because uh, it's pretty tricky because once you pass something by value into a function, like in the body of the function, you can't really assume that it's const expert. You're not going to be able to like static assert with it. So I don't know. Like, is the plan to like have some string literal type that you pass in as a you know non-type template parameter or something like that? I mean, do you do you have a plan to attack it or not really sure? Uh, so uh, if I understood correctly, the question is how. Uh, do I plan to handle uh, the constr x per uh, format string, right? Like checking it at compile time. Yeah, checking it at compile time. That's uh, actually a big problem, and I'm not sure <laughs> yet um, uh, how to do it. Uh, so uh, I would appreciate someone who has experience with uh, const expert and compilers. So if they have any ideas how to do it, let me know. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. So if you have any questions, feel free to find me and ask everything. Thanks.